Hey, what's going on guys? It's your boy Polaire coming at you with a brand new video and today I'm be showing you guys the best and most optimal settings for Call of Duty Modern Warfare's Warzone. Now, I know this game is very straining on your hardware and it is difficult to get some good FPS and consistent FPS in this game because it's very straining. Um, so hopefully the tips I can give you today will help you out and you can get the most juice and FPS out of your hardware as possible. But without further ado guys, let's dive straight into the video. So before we actually get into the actual game files, there's going to be a couple things we want to do first to make sure we are getting the most FPS out of Windows. First, the very thing we're going to do is go to our settings in the bottom left. We're going to go ahead and open it up, go to update and security. And before every tutorial, I always suggest to check for updates. A lot of people neglect updating their PC um, just because they don't find the time or they just forget about it. Just make sure that you do do this pretty much every other night or at least once a week if possible. Um, it'll give you even little updates like this antivirus, which is always good to have up to date. And as you can see, I am completely up to date. If you do have an optional update to like Windows 1909, make sure you've already done that. You do get a small FPS boost from that as well. Now that we've moved on from the Windows update, we can go ahead and make sure that we do have a couple things off, such as Game Bar. So we can go ahead and look up the Xbox Game Bar here. Let's go ahead and see Game Bar shortcuts. So we want to make sure that we do have this off. This is going to basically make clips and stuff for your Xbox. Um, you want to go ahead and turn this off. It's going to give you a little bit of more FPS here. For captures, we want to go ahead and just turn everything off. We can do this through Nvidia if you'd like. Game mode, we want to go ahead and turn this off as well. We want to optimize our own PC. We don't want Windows doing it for us. And that's going to be it for these next three settings. The next setting we want to change in Windows is actually going to be a background app. So we don't want them running in the background. So we're going to go to our settings. Once here, we're going to go do personalization. Sorry, we're actually going to go to privacy. Privacy. Scroll all the way down, down to background apps, and make sure that this is checked off. This is going to make sure that none of these apps are running in the background while you're playing, and it'll give you a small FPS boost as well because it will take some stress off of your uh, processor. All right, the next thing we're actually going to check is that we're going to go into our task manager by right clicking the taskbar at the very bottom. Go ahead and open up your task manager, and from here, we're going to go to startup. And you're going to get a list of all these things that like to boot when you boot your PC. So all this stuff is actually going to be running in the background if it says enabled um, by default. But as you can see, I already have some stuff disabled, like it's the Epic Games Launcher, because I do not always play Fortnite when I launch my PC. Um, so I go ahead and disable everything and open it uh, manually. Um, for IQ, I actually leave this enabled just because it takes care of the RGB or my CPU cooler. Um, some people can disable this if they don't really show off their PC or their case. Um, a lot of people have Spotify enabled, they go ahead and turn that off as well. And if it's like a real tech audio thing, go ahead and leave this on. And if you're not sure what it is, go ahead and leave it enabled just to be safe. Um, but go ahead and disable as much as you can here as possible. Alrighty, and one of the last things we're actually going to check is that hardware acceleration is turned off for all apps that do use it. So a couple of the main three that use it are actually going to be Google Chrome from here. Go ahead and open up your Google Chrome, go to the settings tab all the way down and from here you go to the advanced tab keep scrolling all the way down to system once you're here you want to make sure that continue running background apps when google chrome is closed it's disabled as well as use hardware acceleration when available is also disabled once you uncheck these it's going to ask you to relaunch go ahead and click relaunch and then come back and just make sure that these settings are saved once you've done that you can go ahead and close out of your google chrome let's go ahead and open up spotify in spotify you want to go to the top three dots in the top right go ahead and go to to view from here where you want to make sure hardware acceleration is disabled or unchecked from here once you turn this off make sure you do restart your spotify and ensure that it is actually turned off and that setting did save the last application we're going to check is our discord once you go ahead and open up your discord what you want to do is when it loads go down to your settings on the bottom left from here we're going to go to appearance and then make sure hardware acceleration is turned off as well. Um, this is actually advised by Discord to turn this off if you're experiencing FPS drops in games. Basically, it's going to make your GPU and your graphics card run smoother um, by putting less stress on them. And that uh, power will be dedicated towards your game instead, giving you more FPS. The next thing I do recommend is also turning off your in-game overlay. Um, for Discord, I know some people like this. Um, as for my testing, I have seen people lose anywhere from 5 to 10 FPS. Um, and it also depends on your build and what game you're playing, stuff like that. Um, but I do recommend turning this off if you are trying to get the best FPS possible. From there, we can go ahead and move on to that last Windows tip. 
Alrighty guys, and for that next tip, what we're actually going to do is make sure that our Windows file system is running correctly and that there are no corrupted files that have lost their integrity. So what we're going to do is go to the bottom left and type CMD. Go ahead and open this as an administrator and click yes. Once that box comes up from here, we're going to go ahead and type the first command, which is going to be SFC backslash scan. Now I'll go ahead and leave these commands down in the description for you as well. Basically, this is going to scan your entire file system, your windows code, your registry, and it's going to make sure there aren't any corrupt files or anything that's going to be running on your system. Um, that might slow you down or basically just have any corrupt files um, that will conflict with any of your programs that are running. Alrighty, and as you can see, it did not find any integrity violations. This is ideal. This is what we want. Now, it may say that it did find something in that it did fix it, which is also fine. Make sure you go ahead and restart your PC after that and come back to this video. However, it may say that it did find corrupted files and was unable to fix them, which is where this next command comes into play. So I'm going to go ahead and paste this and we're going to go ahead and just check the health. From here, it says no comp uh, component store was detected, which is ideal. Um, however, if something is detected, what we're actually going to do is we're going to change the check health end to actually scan health. So this is going to completely scan your system and it's going to automatically repair anything it may find. And from here, you can go ahead and restart once it fixes this as well. All right, now to hop into the actual Warzone game, we're going to go ahead and go to the options tab. And to get started, we're going to go ahead and head over to general. From here, you want to make sure that field of view is all the way up if you can. This will give you the most to see, I'll, however, it may give you lower frames. So if you're on a lower end PC, I do recommend turning this down. Um, however, if you are a competitive player and you want the best field of view possible, um, as you can see, it increases at 120. You can see much more. Um, I recommend turning this all the way up. Um, brightness is preference and the HUD bounds also preference. We're going to keep going keep going and down here i personally have my fps counter in the top left turned on uh enabled and then the latency and if you think that you're having packet loss i would turn this on just to see like if it's actually affecting you in game um and then if it is you can head over to one of my vi other videos um they're there for all games not just fortnite um and it applies to everything so we can go ahead and leave that disabled for now because i don't have any problems with it i just personally like to see my fps in latency so i'm gonna go ahead and leave that there hopping over to the next tab we're gonna go to the graphics settings from here you want to make sure that you are playing on full screen this is going to make sure that you are getting the most fps possible and this is one of the biggest things you can do to boost your fps um, it's actually going to give you the most focus on your screen and it's not going to let you all tab without like minimizing your game um, but this is preferred if you aren't going for the most fps make sure you are playing on the right monitor and for display adapter make sure you do have this on your graphics card a lot of people um, may accidentally especially if you are, are are on a laptop, sorry. Um, we'll have this on their integrated graphics card instead of their GPU, um, which will give you a significantly lower FPS. So make sure this is on your NVIDIA or AMD graphics card. Your refresh rate, that's gonna be what your highest monitor setting is. And your render resolution, I recommend leaving this on 100 unless um, you absolutely need to turn this down because you're struggling to get FPS. Um, but I would recommend doing everything else in the video before coming back to this setting. Um, if you do increase this, this will dramatically tax your FPS and this is one of the biggest things you can change. However, I would leave this the same as your resolution. As you can see, I am playing on 19 by 1920 by 1080, so we're going to leave that at 100. Aspect ratio, go ahead and leave that automatic. We're going to turn off vSync because we don't want any input lag and this is bad for FPS games. Custom frame rate, we, I go ahead and put this on 160. A lot of people like to put this at 144 or whatever. I just do it to see um, which areas of the map are giving me lower FPS, stuff like that. Um, just make sure that this is above your monitor setting while you're playing. The autofocus is actually gonna be like while well, it's minimized, so it doesn't really stress your graphics card or CPU that much. A lot of people put this on 30 or lower. I just leave this on 60. Um, NVIDIA highlights, we want to make sure this is disabled. This is a huge setting as well. It's basically going to be recording the whole time while you're playing if you have this enabled. You want to go ahead and turn that off so it's not actually running in the background. Display gamma, we're going to leave that at normal unless you are on playing on a TV. Then we're going to go ahead and change that to the right. Texture resolution, uh, this is honestly preference. I recommend turning this down to either low or very low. Um, I personally play on it with low and then texture, fil uh, texture filter 
Anisiostropic, we're gonna go ahead and turn this down to low as well. This is gonna give you about one to 2% FPS boost. Um, as you can see the difference between like the mushy compared to the actual define. Now some people like me, we may have um, a nice graphics card. So this can be preference. You can turn it up just a little bit to improve the quality of the game overall. Um, so I'm personally gonna leave it at normal. However, if you are going for the most FPS, I recommend turning this to low. Particle quality, this is actually going to be set to low. Um, this, If you have this on high, this is actually really going to affect you when you're actually in a fight and during explosions, stuff like that. I recommend turning this to low. Bullet sprays, this is basically... Um, you can basically neglect this. It's going to give you maybe like a 1% um, FPS boost. You go ahead and turn this off. For FPS, shooters, stuff like that, I recommend turning this on just because bullet uh, impacts and sprays are definitely important to see on different surfaces you can kind of tell where people are from it but i recommend leaving this on it gives you a better feel of the overall game tessellation as you can see the difference here it gives you a difference between the geometry as you can see the ones on the right are a little bit more raised i'm going to go ahead and turn this completely disabled just to get the most fps because i'm definitely not going to be looking at the ground most of the time i really don't care about the depth of the rocks I'm trying to get the most fps possible to win that fight Scrolling down to shadows and lighting, we're going to go ahead and turn shadows down to low. This is huge. This is going to give you anywhere from a 3 to 5% FPS boost. Um, cash bot sun shadows, we want to make sure these are disabled. Um, this will give you a huge FPS boost as well. Particle lighting, turn this to low. This will help when you're helping into fights. Um, it's really not that much noticeable, that much more noticeable, and it will give you a significant FPS boost while you're fighting. Ray tracing, you want to turn this off unless you're just a casual gamer and you're going for the best graphics. Otherwise, you really wouldn't be watching this video, you get the most FPS if you're playing for the graphics. So I would go ahead and turn this to disabled. Anyway, occlusion, you can really disable that and the screen space reflection, turn these off as well, just because these are used when you're using anti-aliasing and we're not gonna use that in this video. As I just said, anti-aliasing, some people prefer this, but when you're going for the most FPS and the game itself is already a bit blurry, so I go ahead and turn this off. Um, the depth of field of view, I want to turn this off as well. I personally don't like the blurriness when you ADS to your gun. Film strength, we're going to go ahead and turn that all the way down. Motion blur and world motion blur and weapon motion blur, we want this disabled. Um, this is going to give you a little bit more FPS as well and to make your game look less blurry. As you can see, excuse me, when you're turning with this on, it just completely blurs the image, which you wouldn't really be able to see someone if there was someone there, as well as for the motion blur on the weapon. And then film grain, this is honestly preference. This does not have an impact on your FPS. This is just going to add more noise to the image. As you can see, this is added with 100 compared to zero. I personally leave this on zero just because I feel I don't need it in this game. However, it could be different for different games. And then once you've completely changed all of these settings, make sure you go ahead and apply them. Once applied, you can go ahead and close out of the game. And there you have it guys, those are the best settings for the most FPS in Call of Duty Warzone. I really hope this video helped you out, and if it did, you notice a significant FPS boost, make sure you guys leave a like down in the description. Or, sorry guys, make sure you leave a like, leave a comment, subscribe if you want more videos like this, and go ahead and hop in my Discord if you haven't already, I'll leave that down in the description as well. We have a community now, since we just did hit a thousand members, I am doing a Discord Nitro giveaway. Um, you can see this in an announcements, and this is going to be drawn soon. Make sure you hop in here. I also posted it on my Twitter and my YouTube community tab, so if you want to go check that out, make sure you hop in there. And then as you can see, you can ask different PC questions. You can just chat in general and promote yourself down here. Then we have a little channel for funny memes and stuff like that. But that's pretty much it for the video, guys. I appreciate all of you watching, and I will catch all of you later. Peace.